And let me bring to the show my first guest this morning, Stephen Englander, Managing Director of Standard Chartered. Good morning, Stephen, and thank you for joining us. Stephen, do you hear us? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. No, I was just welcoming you to the show. Um, my first question is, of course, in regards to um, Janet Yellen and, and Pavel. What would you like to hear from them today? Well, look, first, I, I don't think there's going to be much difference from what they've said in recent uh, speeches. You know, Powell at the FOMC press conference and, and um, uh, Treasury Secretary Yellen in, at various uh, public appearances. They'll probably be questioned by Republicans on the costs and whether they're doing too much. And, and again, I think they're going to stress that bigger is better than uh, too big is better than too small. I think the Democrats are, are going to try and give them cover, basically encouraging them to, um, you know, in, in, in their kind of uh, indicated commitments to um, keep rates low and, and to do what it takes to get the economy back on a footing again. So I, I think that both of them are not going to try and make waves on this one. They're going to try and keep things very steady. I was wondering, do you think the Fed um, addressed correctly the inflationary pressure, pressures issues and not only, of course, what, what happened on the bond market, uh, which is totally normal, by the way, to, to see the, those higher trade yields, which are kind of calmer today and yesterday, of course. Look, I, I think they, they succeeded partially. Um, it's very unclear. I mean, the... Um, you know, what we're seeing in the foreign exchange market is, is both EM and G10 FX selling off, normally not a sign of dovishness. So I think there's a little bit of nervousness in the market about whether um, the Fed's numbers um, all add up. Um, you know, I, so I, I'd give them a 6 out of 10, um, or Powell a 6 out of 10 for, for their performance um, or for their ability to convince the market, but I think there's still a lot of skepticism there. So are you from the part, um, how can I say, the financial community is pretty divided today. So are you from, from the guys that are um, pretty concerned about um, inflationary pressures to the upside? Look, you know, our forecast is that they hit 2.1 and kind of stay there. That's our baseline. The um, forecast, uh, I mean, the, the risk, I think, are, are kind of to the upside. Um, you know, they are counting on the Phillips curve being extremely flat. And, you know, after taking very small fiscal steps, at, you know, o over the past 30 years, we're taking a colossal fiscal step. And there's a lot of uncertainty. I, I don't think you can extrapolate from the experience of the last 25 years to where we are now. It's like using a, a map of Rome to guide yourself in, in London. It's, uh, you know, it's not very reliable. I was wondering, I was also, of course, reporting on Biden, uh, Biden's three trillion um, economic plan. Do you think that um, at this point the U.S. economy um, is kind of um, inundated uh, with liquidity? Look, there, there will be a lot of fiscal. Um, you know, obviously, we haven't even seen the full impact of the December 900 billion, uh, never mind the 1.9 trillion. I, you know, one thing you have to keep in mind is that the, the whatever the number is for the infrastructure plan, three trillion or, or you know, the latest one, um, that, that one is spread out over a couple of years. So the 1.9 trillion will be largely spent in six months. The three trillion is, is, I think, you know, is meant to be longer term projects, although we have to see how that plan evolves since the, it seems that a lot of Democrats want to have a very broad definition of infrastructure investment. Um, you know, which could, could include a lot of items not conventionally viewed as investment. I just want to have a very quick check on the foreign exchange market. It's pretty interesting what we're seeing over there. The DXY way stronger today, half a percent higher at 92.7 in the euro dollar at 1.8 and sterling against the dollar at 1.37. Considering the circumstances uh, that we are witnessing, where do you see the DXY or the dollar index in the following 12 months? Well, we distinguish between the near term and, and, and the medium term. I think in the near term, we expect a very strong U.S. reopening. DXY to be a little bit stronger, not much stronger, but that the, um, the market in the first instance won't be able to resist yields backing up. We expect 175 by mid-year, 2% by, by the end of the year. 
you know, beyond like a six month horizon, we, 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 we tend to think that the weaknesses in the recovery plan, the fact that this one is very um, spending intensive, not, not at all investment intensive, the external imbalances are likely to rise. We, we see dollar weakness in the medium to long term, but we're cautious about the short term because we don't, you know, the market is, has a very hard time resisting uh, buying dollars when rates go up. So we could see a little bit, I wouldn't say enormous dollar strength in the next couple of months. So I just want to show another cross, extremely interesting. This is the US dollar and the Turkish lira, of course, and I want to give to our viewers a little bit of um, context. Of course, the turmoil with the Turkish lira came after President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on Friday unexpectedly fired Najib Agdal, the central bank governor, who had repeatedly raised interest rates in an effort to tame inflation since his appointment in November. Um, of course, foreign investors say the move renewed concerns that a central bank has lost its independence from political influence, diminishing policymakers' credibility and sopping appetite for Turkish assets. Um, I was wondering, I'm not sure you're covering, of course, the Turkish era, but what's your take on everything that's going on? And do you think the guys are um, kind of in, in, in default danger? I, I don't know about default, but we still see risk to the Turkish lira. The, um, you know, the reserves position is very, very low. Um, the market clearly wants to see higher rates and more of a, a risk premium and that the looks like the central bank isn't going to be giving. Um, we don't see much hope for Turkish tourism in the middle of the year, which could offset the, the impact of higher oil prices. So, you know, the risks are still to the downside in our view. So it, it, how can I say it's not a currency that you're looking at at all? Sorry? It's not a currency cross that you're looking at all. It's not a, you know, we're not looking to buy Turkish lira, that's for sure. All right. Thank you very much. Steven Englander, uh, Standard yeah. Chartered. Thank you for joining Thank us. You.